Hola. We're here with Lucifer from. How are you doing? Oh, so far so good. Okay, so we're at DreamHack Valencia. Kind of, even though you're not from Valencia, kind of your home event because it's an esports event, it's in Spain. At the other events in the past few months, you've been kind of like a, like at WCS, you were kind of a, um, a surprise finisher in the top placings, mm. but now you're back in, in Spain almost immediately afterwards for an event. Do you feel pressure to kind of like, you have to place top here because all the Spanish fans will be expecting it? Yeah, well, mm, a bit, yeah, I feel like, I mean, it's not like something I'm thinking like about all the time, but yeah, after last week performance, I think people expect me to do much better than they did last week. Like if I had lost in second round in WCS, no one would have been surprised. But now if I don't make it to the bracket, I feel like I would disappoint some Spanish fans. So yeah, maybe in a sense it's a bit pressuring, but not that much. Okay. So in StarCraft 2, I know you, because you and your brother have been studying so much, you didn't have so many opportunities to go to big events. And so you did pretty well at an event earlier in the year that was a small one, was it The Gathering maybe? Yeah, I won. Okay. So this is the event you did quite well at. And then obviously your brother got really famous because of IEM from getting all the way to the semi-finals. Um, were, were both you guys like always this good in StarCraft 2 and you just never had the chance because you never went to a tournament? Or did, did something happen and you both improved a lot over this year? What did you think it is? Uh, I think we've been watching like a lot more streams than we did in the past. And for me, the turning point was I am when I got to watch like Korean Terran players playing oh, okay. um, first sight. I realized how little I knew about the game and oh. how wrong I was playing Terran. Like especially watching Supernova taught me like how to really play Terran. Uh, you don't. It's really important not to be predictable. That's why he has so many buildings, so many transitions, and that's something like I maybe kind of knew, but or maybe I didn't. I don't know, but not something that I gave the importance it had. Like after that event, I realized how turn is supposed to be played at the moment. Ah, okay. It's interesting you would say that Supernova taught you how to play Terran because he's known for like a good mech in uh, TVZ, and yet your brother actually beat him at that tournament yeah. in that series. Uh, did you guys talk before he played that match? Like, what do you think of his playoff run at IEM? Because it seemed like he was. People thought he was going to lose to 4GG, then they thought he'd lose to Supernova. What, what did you think of his run at IEM? Yeah, well, his run was really good. Like. People usually expect foreigners to lose against Koreans and then Vortex maybe hasn't that big name as other foreigners or he didn't before I am. But I think that if you would have asked to like the pro gamers, they would have told you that Vortex had a good chance because we kind of know others' level because we play constantly on the ladder and so on. And I think that they it was it had to be sooner or later that he performed this well in the tournament because he was like uh, like I can think of a player he loses more than he wins to on Europe. Oh, okay. I actually remember, a lot of people might not know this, but very early on in StarCraft 2 in the beta, you had a couple of tournaments where you did well in like beta tournaments, yeah. but then we didn't see you again until this year basically in the bigger tournaments. Was it only school or were you not that motivated to play StarCraft 2? What was it? No, in the past I had like, I've, sometimes I felt tired of the game and I just didn't play. I wasn't like really hooked into the game at the start, like I played the beta for some months and then I kind of stopped playing, but then... Uh, I would say at the start of this year, maybe, I felt like really playing again, like a lot of games. And yeah, that's it. Like, yeah, I kind of recovered the patient uh, this year. When you were a Warcraft 3 player, yeah. because you came along right at the end and you had a couple of successful tournaments, people had like kind of a rude nickname. They'd call you Lucky From. <laughs> you remember this? Yeah. No one in StarCraft 2 remembers this. And they like, they seem to like, they like you. You're a popular player. Why do you think people had, were so rude and they kept kept that nickname going for so long because you were like an upstart i think it was mainly because i played orc so a lot of people thought that the only reason why i got to the top was yeah. because i was playing orc even if i was beating like top players on orc mirror uh, it didn't seem to matter so that's why they went like saying those things but actually i think like i got as well a lot of support in warcraft 3 like most people saw me as the this guy who plays Orc and just wins because Orc, but other people saw that the guy who came years later and made it to the top level, like in Warcraft uh, 3, not many people did that, so it was kind of balanced, I'd say. In StarCraft 2 now, the funny thing is, you actually see a lot of the top European players are ex Warcraft 3 players, mm -hmm. and they're actually players who in Warcraft 3 you were much better than. Some of these players who are top players now, like Nanowa and stuff, they weren't actually that good at Warcraft yeah. 3, they never had big placings. Is it strange for you to see so many faces and now they're doing really well? Uh, not really. I mean, it's a new game, so uh, the skills you need for StarCraft 2 aren't exactly the same than Warcraft 3. 
and as well it's like a really new game so it hasn't developed enough so that players that may not do that well in a full developed game can still do well here because well the game hasn't reached that stage yet so yeah it's not kind of surprising to me like maybe in some years I think that well in all the games happen that some of the top players of the early game just disappear I think in the StarCraft 2 it, it will happen as well after your brother had the big IEM result, because he went to this Berlin Open and just dropped out almost immediately and lost all yeah. his group stage games, I mean, he told me in an interview that actually he hadn't practiced that much. Yeah. But on the surface, to someone who doesn't know that, it looked like, oh, IEM must have been a fluke. That's how they would think of it. And yet, he did so well at WCS, and so did you. Beforehand, did you know from your training that you were both going to place really highly? Did you have this sense? Uh, well, we felt like pretty good like playing. And then when we saw the bracket, I was like, okay, if I'm a bit happy, then I'm, I have pretty good chances of making top six. And if he went through his second run, either Nerky or Sorto, then with the same for him. Um, but I think people give so much credit to results. Like, you win one tournament, and you're the best player in the world, and you lose one tournament, and you belong to Bronze League. Yeah. I think it's kind of exaggerated. I think that they should focus on how the player plays rather than only results. Sure. Hmm... Okay, so at WCS Europe, this is the first international event, like a big event, where you really like got a really strong placing and you got to play some really top level players. Um, is there any of the players that you were surprised how well you did against? Is there any of the losses that you had where you thought you had a better chance? How do you evaluate the tournament for you? Well, my match against Happy was, I was really afraid before, well, afraid. Uh, like on ladder, it's maybe 50-50, and I was kind of, not comfortable playing him because Happy has always, well, he played in Warcraft 3 as well, and he has always been like a beast on offline. Like, he plays much better yeah. offline than he does online. And in this game, he's quite good online, so I was kind of, uh, this could go either way. So, yeah, I was maybe a bit surprised that I managed to take him off. And then the rest of the tournament went pretty much as I expected. Like, I beat Sokka and Dark Force. Then I lost to Stefano. I thought I think I misplayed those games on late game. Then I lost to. Well, I beat Rabi and Lowelly. Lowelly had played him on ladder in a few weeks earlier and it was on my favor, so yeah, I ex kind of expected to win or maybe not 2 0, but I think I had pretty good chances of winning the best of three. Then I lost to Vortex, which, well, I, I expected that. I, heard, I was talking to Sortov a few days ago and he told me that if you're right at the top of the EU ladder, then he, every time he searches for their game, he t tends to get like Happy or you or. It's like you all get each, have to play each yeah. other all the time. Is this yeah. the case? Do you know each other really well? Yeah, I've been playing with another account, not with my main account. So yeah, I got to play like, I don't know. I think one day I played like six games in a row against 4GG. Ah, okay. There are four against sort of. So yeah, yeah, we are playing the same players all the time. How would you describe these players' level then? Because people often wonder like, how good is the EU ladder? Because everyone's saying Korean ladder is so amazing. Are the players at the top of the EU ladder all like Europe's best players? Yeah, pretty much. Like. All the players that are living in Europe play ladder and you get to play them. So yeah, playing in the top of the ladder means playing against the top European players, which is really tough. Like if you watch the person, the win ratios, uh, most of them are like around 60%, which is kind of crazy. Like players such as Happy and so on, having just a 60% win ratio means that you are basically playing against the top all the time. At WCS, because the two of you, Vortex and uh, Lucifer, made it so far in the tournament, and obviously between games you can talk to each other and you can discuss strategy. Even though Stefano was the big favorite, people felt like because you would eat, like for example, when Stefano beat you, then he, then Vortex got to play and he could have talked to you beforehand. Were the two of you trying to come up with plans as to how you could beat Stefano? Or how do you think you did? Uh, not really because I don't know that much about CBC. Like uh, okay. since I don't play Zerg, uh, I mean, I watch a lot of games and so on, but if you don't play the match in like a really top level, I don't think you can give advice to someone like as Vortex, for instance. Ah, okay. So yeah, I just told him to play standard, like don't get nervous, don't try crazy stuff he never does because that, those things never work. And yeah, that was pretty much it. Obviously because, I mean, like what you were saying before, if you win the tournament, people say, oh, this guy's the best in the world. People are going to say Stefano is easily the best well, foreigner. He's so far ahead of everyone. How close do you think the gap is between the other foreigners and Stefano? And do you think he is the best? Well, I do think he's the best, but not because he won one tournament, but because he's won, like, a lot. And I don't know how many. Oh, okay. And then if you watch him play, you realize that, yeah, that he's freaking good. Uh, I think that it's not that much uh, 
far from like the other top European players, but yeah, he's definitely one step ahead. Okay, one thing that was surprising to me is when I did an interview with your brother online, I asked him, like, obviously you just had these big results and everyone's thinking like, oh, what's going to happen next? What tournaments will he go to next? And he told me that because of his school being so, like his schedule is not very good for the rest of the year. And that after a couple of these months now, he'll have to take a big break of like three or four months where he can't go to any big events. I know you also study computer science, so is it a similar problem for you or will we see you at all the big events? I think I will be playing more than him because like, I have taken less lectures, so I have more time for StarCraft 2. So yeah, I'm still in college, but it won't be as time consuming as it used to be. Well, I mean, your placing at WCS was high enough that you got a good chunk of money. And uh, obviously there will be opportunities to play in other tournaments. So is it the case that, like, when do you finish your school? Hmm. When does uh, it finish for you? It depends on how fast I want to go, but okay. it might take like from two to five years, depends on how, how fast I want to go. If you kept doing really well in StarCraft 2, would you consider like take a year off and just do StarCraft 2? Is it even in your mind? Yeah, I've been thinking about it lately. Uh, I haven't decided anything yet, but it's it's becoming a possibility, yeah. Okay. Since you play so much online and on the ladder and online cops as well, is there a player who, uh, I mean, there's always a stereotype that there's certain players who if they do amazing online but they haven't come to big lands, people say, oh, they cheat or they, they suck or whatever. But then we, we tend to see after they've been to enough lands and got over their nerves, they tend to be quite good. Can you think of someone right now who's really good on the ladder, maybe really good in online competitions, but who hasn't shown himself to be really good online, who you think would be really good? Can you pick, yeah. pick some talent for us? Who? Ruf. He's, he's like a German circle player. Like, he's really good uh, on online, but he isn't attending as many offline tournaments as, as I think he should. But I don't think he's cheating or anything like that. It's just that he doesn't play offline tournaments. But he's really good, like, really, really good. Okay. Any final words? Ah, yes, thanks to my team and my fans and everyone who has watched this. Okay, gracias. Hasta luego. Adios.